Hey folks, I'm Rob Orpilla, also known as Kerr the Artist. So when you're competing in the 48 hour film competition, you don't actually get the info that you need to make the film until right when it starts. So you literally only have 48 hours. Right when you're sent the email with the info, you have to conceptualize, write, shoot, and edit an entire short film that's a minimum of four minutes, but a maximum of seven minutes in length. We had to use a randomly generated category, ranging anywhere from action to musical to drama to comedy. We got thriller as our genre, had to include include a character named Alexander Green, who was a tattoo artist, had to include the line, she'll never know, and we had to include a pizza box as a prop. I didn't even sleep the first night of the competition, so I was running off of Red Bull and delusions. But we got it done, I had a blast. I was very happy I got to work with Leif from LKH Productions, who we're gonna sit down and have a chat with right now. Howdy there, sir. I'm doing well. I was actually uh, brought onto the project as sort of a la uh, last minute addition. So Leif reached out to me. We've known each other for a bit. Uh, we've always talked about working together. He wanted me to make a, an animated logo for his character, which you can actually see on his shirt right there called the Cactopus. Uh, just a quick four, uh, like four or five second animation, something that we could he could put uh, at the start of his films for his future endeavors under LKH Productions. Uh, so I had some fun putting that together. I was like filming reference footage and just really animating each tentacle individually and just getting into it. And he, he told me the, the first use for it would be for this competition, which he was already doing. So after we, we were talking on the phone for a little bit, I was like, hey, if you needed an editor, I'd be happy to come on because I love making short films. I love live action filming making it's it's a endeavor of mine that I don't really get to experience all too much I I mostly primarily in animation media so I was brought on board as the editor and little by little I started uh unlocking different roles uh in the production but before we get into that Leif why, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the 48 hour production in the first place doing the 48 hour film project was really a passion project of mine because I've been at this filmmaking thing for pretty much my whole life. I started to do projects for, um, you know, different musicians doing uh, music videos. I've done uh, nonprofit work. I've done commercial work. But each time I do these projects, I always was like, I got stories to tell. I want to tell stories. I was gearing up and as you know, I'm going to be moving to uh, Florida very soon. And so I had a very short period of time and I was like, you know what? I saw this advertising. It just it happened to come up on my feed and it was like 48 hour film project. You got 48 hours, make a feature or a short film. And I was like, is that even possible? And it turns out, yes, it is. Cause I started watching everybody else's on YouTube and being like, they did that in two days? Yo, I gotta try this. I gotta know if I can do this. I applied and there's a little bit of, I mean, not too extensive, but a, a bit of an extensive like process that you gotta go through. And they had an overabundance, uh, like so many people just signing up for this thing this year. The representative ended up reaching out to me and being like, hey, I don't think that we're gonna be able to have you accepted because we already have everything full. And then all of a sudden I get this email on a random Tuesday and it was like, bing. And I look in my inbox and it's like, congratulations, you've been accepted. What? And he was like, we rented out a whole nother theater for you guys are gonna be group E from A to E. Like that's how many groups there were. And each group contains like 20 submissions or more. I gotta get a production team together. I gotta get everybody together to do this thing. I was already in contact with you. And then you just opened the door and were like, whoa, I would love to be a part of that if I can find the time. And I know your schedule, you're like a madman. Like you're all over the place like me too. Cause this man, this man is a powerhouse of talent. Like, holy shit. I want him on every one of my projects. Uh, Nate Fillers was my director photography the way i met him was bartending at a bar that's no longer there anymore but it was for a long time and he's telling me about push pull shots he's telling me about camera rigs he's telling me about gimbals he's telling me about crane shots oh my god yes like i'm like i need to work with you and sure enough next thing you know he was like yeah absolutely i want to do it and then i knew i was going to be directing i didn't know how this thing was going to play out i'm like i don't know what a writer's room is going to look like at like three in the morning when we're all sitting around trying to brainstorm because the thing about this whole project is that they make it pretty much foolproof that you can't cheat. You can't cheat the system because they don't give you a genre until the day of. They don't give you your prop that you have to use, your line of dialogue that you have to use, and your one character that has to appear on screen until right at the last minute. And I was like, I just got to go with the flow and see where this thing goes and go it did. Like, dude, I couldn't even believe how well 
things started working out. Like it just like one thing after another it didn't all work out. Now did it in the beginning? Oh no, yeah. So when we started, exactly what you said, you get a list of credentials, including your genre, right when the contest starts, so that you can't start writing until then. We get our crew together. We're sitting in your kitchen. We're eating tacos. Yes, because it was Cinco de Mayo too. We're sitting there. Seven o'clock, no email. We're like, okay, seven ten. Maybe they're slow. Hour goes by, and we're panicking. We're like messaging the the group. We're emailing the guy. We're doing everything we can to get in contact with these people. That first moment where we all were like clenched buttholes going like oh my god what is gonna happen when we didn't get our genre didn't get anything i remember producer paul sitting here right and just being like oh no 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 like he's trying to be positive as best he could but he's like oh this is bad we didn't get our credentials and to this day i still don't know why like somehow they just didn't get it to us on time two and a half hours later so we were starting this off handicapped already okay we have everything now we're like what kind of story do we want to tell i think it was nate that came up with this idea that like somehow the tattoo ink if it gets in your system it causes you to hallucinate and we were just trying to build everything around then we had like five or six different versions of how we were going to do this there was one where it was going to be like a mom and her kid we had one where it was going to be like a boyfriend and girlfriend renting an apartment we were just like we That's need something magic happens. now <laughs> yeah that was when the madman hour started happening we got out the the sheet which is right behind you and started scribbling things down the tattoo artist Correct. on the phone call okay. yes. do we show that to the audience though yes because that like, spoils the twist the ending twist she was taking up an extra shift because he keeps spending all their money so she's going to work and then at the end um I'm sorry, hold on, my brain just stopped. I was already two Red Bulls in, and I was just typing out scripts a lot, because uh, I, I do a lot of scripting with my animated projects, so I'm used to the formatting, and I'm used to creating a narrative, like making sure that everything tells a story. George calls out to her. Don't forget your... Scarlet slams the door. George continues disheartened. Steel necklace. Hey, don't forget your... <laughs> steel necklace when you're you have the pressure of the time limit you started late and you're working in a genre that you don't normally work with it's a lot harder but we figured it out um i was storyboarding a lot too so that's what i i got on as like the writer or something because i i understood the scripting format so i was like i'll just do it just to get it done and that that became a recurring thing uh whenever we just ran into a wall i was just like i'll just do it let's just get it done and and i knew that you could handle it like whenever whenever something would come up because people would like direct to me because not only was i credited as director but also i was the team lead or whatever for the 48 hour film project so like every question feasible and that's something that i learned that i was like being a director is a lot of just fielding questions all the time like you're just getting bombarded just like yes no yes no 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 yeah this is how this went down folks okay like we had pretty much secured the main plot we also had our two main leads riddick and we had elizabeth you have to just go like the the pieces of the track aren't there. You're laying them down as you go, and you still have to drive the train. But we're going to aim to shoot in order, but if not, we're, the, the idea is to not let 10 minutes go by without doing something productive. Okay. Right. So if we need to wait a couple minutes for people to get their shit together, fine. But if it's too long, it's like, all right, we got to shoot something. Right. There's always something to shoot. You and I are sitting up and I was like, all right. I'm like, how you feeling? And you're like, I'm feeling all right. And at this point, I'm viewing you as like, all right, this guy has to edit my film. And I know how intense that is. And I want to give him enough time, room and energy. So I kept like checking your energy levels being like, you need a taco, you need like a water, a beer. And then you say to me, you're like, I think I'm going to storyboard it out. And I was like, wait, really? <laughs> and you were like, yeah. And I'm like, do you got the energy for that? You're like, I'm used to this. I'm going to stay up. I'm going to do this. And I was like, okay, if I have to direct in the morning, I'm like, I need at least like two hours maybe three solid hours of just sleep time and then i'll be good and you were like go get it and i was like all right so i crash and i wake up and i'm thinking in my head like if i was storyboarding i'd get a page maybe a page and a half done this guy had like six pages or more <laughs> like the movie's already here like we have the whole thing like we, it's already done so we we have a few demanding shots sprinkled throughout, but the majority of them should be a lot simpler. We're just hoping that the standout shots can help carry the, the, the film in a sense that it looks like 
we're not just pointing the camera and shooting like there's some thought put into this and basically like from there like everything just started clicking man it, my dad came in clutch i wasn't sure if that was going to happen or not my dad ended up being second unit uh cinematographer doing all the drone shots and so like he came from cape cod up to do this thing and he was like yeah i'm gonna visit with your brother and i'll come up here and do some drone shots for you boom 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 and it all just started coming together dude i still to this day man i don't know i think it was just our power of positivity and how we were just like we weren't gonna go down without a fight i'm still just overjoyed i, I I'm, I'm still in awe that we made it you know to not only to making it in on time and and, and just getting that done everything meeting requirements because that's hard enough first time around but then we also get accepted as the best of and then we even won an award for best titles which is by the way we don't have a title sequence saying maybe it's the milk in it so what they were really crediting was you man and, and cactopus's animation which is phenomenal i i've done countless projects in my life like filmmaking animation plays like this and that i am so used to failure that i try to every time i hit a wall i just go a different direction and i felt yeah. like i was trying to bring that to this project uh at one point i remember i was just like telling everybody what to do and i was like oh shit now i'm taking over now i feel like i'm <laughs> I'm stealing Leif's thunder and everything. <laughs> so basically, here's what's going to happen. We have the main cast, we have the crew. We're going to split off into two teams. Uh, Paul's going to be switching in between the two different teams. He's going to be the communication between the teams. Us two, it's going to be Nate the cameraman and the two lead actors, which is Riddick and Liz. As we're doing that, Team B, which is everybody else, Chris, Danielle, we need to have Yvonne get Liz in makeup, and then you can give me notes on the script. Yeah. Are there any questions or concerns? No. Awesome. But, but I'm thankful that... that you didn't see it that way. No, I didn't see it that way at all. And I was able to use that ambition to get it done. Like every time we hit a wall, like we had that sequence where we were gonna, we made like this whole fake blood, like tentacle, like guts right. coming out yeah. uh, for the last shot. Then he's freaked out. He calls you, starts dumping the milk in the grass. And you're like, fuck this, you hang up. Then we crank it up to 11. This is when he starts getting his guts ripped out. This is when, uh... Oh my... And we couldn't get it done on time, so I was like, I'm just gonna run outside and run around Riddick with the camera or something. And that just... shot is amazing. <laughs> that shot was so good, and the way you intercut it... <laughs> like, because I didn't see... I didn't see your vision on that yet. Like, I just didn't, I didn't see it. Let's do one where you collapse to your knees and you're like, oh. Army of Darkness. Yes. Original ending. Okay. Action. No! Okay. And I'm, and I'm going on like lack of sleep, barrage of phone calls, people asking me questions, logistical things. And the next thing I know, I turn around and I see you out there and I'm like, dude, this guy's got so much energy whizzing around. You're running around, <laughs> Riddick. Like, I mean, I'm talking like running, you know? And I'm like with the camera and I'm like this guy. But yeah, I remember a couple people like Nate coming to me and just being like, so like, do I listen to you or, or, you know, do I listen to Rob? And I was like, I was like, no, no, no. I'm like, listen, I'm like, Rob's, Rob's good. Anything <laughs> Rob says, I'm like, I'm on board for, unless it's like really questionable. And he's like, please join this cult with me and drink the blood of my ancestors. Then maybe ask me about it and I'll tell you. That's for the sequel. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's the cult. Yeah. Maybe it's the cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a great time all around, man. And like, I appreciate you saying that and like, you know, not wanting to step on toes, but I feel like in a project like this, like you have to be close knit and you have to be willing to all kind of go the distance. And I felt like we all were, I say you were running around, but so was Riddick. Riddick ran up, you had him running up and down those stairs I like did. a hundred times. Action. Oh, I keep too early. Yes. Sorry. No worries. Action. Yvonne. Um, so after that, you're oh, immediately like, oh fuck, and you run at Nate and you're gonna back up. Action. Yvonne. Good shit. 
Cut. Riddick was a trooper. He never said no. The only thing he really said no about was using uh, vegan products to do the fake blood scene. But it's just like, sure, like whatever. Right, right, right. No, but, no, no. He yeah. said no to using traditional products. Uh, he wanted to use vegan products. Okay, yeah, just yeah, to yeah, make no, that clear. I mean. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used oat milk in place of regular right. milk yeah. for the moo juice container. And then yes. I, I just, on a sticky note, see, if I had more time, I would have designed something on Photoshop and like printed it out. But I was like, no, nah, sticky note Sharpie. <laughs> the thing I love about this film is is that it takes like a heavy subject because if you remember it was Riddick who was really the 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 seed of this thing going like you know what doesn't get enough attention is like Hindu mythology in movies there's a vast thing of like all kinds of ghosts and spirits and different things and I was like really so we started to dig into it it's the belief that Buddha's like like corrupt things and it likes milk specifically or like how do I thread uh, that into well there? let me just consuming Buddha contaminated milk is considered a typical route for Buddha possession of humans so just drinking like dairy milk is considered like you know a typical route for a Buddha possession of humans basically don't drink that hey are you pouring out my milk again oh Maybe so, the tattoo he gets is like an anti buta something. If, if there's any insignia or scribbles yeah, right. or anything. The, the lotus, if you just search up Hindu lotus, like that, that's that's just a very yeah, easy like. Oh so, yeah, we probably are gonna have to go with me painting it on your too. arm or something. How about the tattoo you got yesterday? We don't have that kind of money. The Hindu lotus is crucial for spirit boarding. We're gonna need at least one person who's comfortable with us shooting their feet because there is a point about their mythology, about how they have backwards feet. You're going to dramatically okay, step in, that, right? watch me. Yep. Establish the foot. Okay. Another establish, but a little bit quicker. Boom. And now pick up the pace. Yup. Exactly like that. So I had never known about boots or anything like that. Like I, it was all news to me. It still touches like a, a serious topic and, and, and a thrilling topic, but we still managed to have this touch of like comic relief to it. I think we should have a little bit of humor with it too. Just to kind of, you know, yeah. not, not too much, not too much. Just no, a, just no, a, no, just no, a no, little two dead eyes floating no, over no, and fighting. I, if, we're, if we're smart with the humor, lightning. don't make the ghost stuff the humor. The no. humor comes from you and your freaking right. eyes. Right. Scarlet, Scarlet. So funny thing about the title, maybe it's the milk. Uh, it was actually going to be called Tasmanian Rattlesnake Oil at first. And it was called that like right up until we were editing. I just threw out there. I was like, I had this thing that I was working on. I don't know why it even came out of me now that I think about it. Like, but I was like, yeah, I was thinking about this horror idea with this female heroine who's like, you know, the final girl in a horror story. He's drugged her with this, this, uh, this drug called Tasmanian Rattlesnake Oil. Now that she has this in her system, if she takes three steps, then she's dead. So she she's stuck in this chair and I'm starting to go on about it. And I'm feeling kind of like passionate about it. And you just stop me cold. And you're like, Leif, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, 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 no. Like if she takes three steps, she died. And you're like, no, 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 not that part. What does he inject her with? And I was like, Oh, Tasmanian rattlesnake oil? And you're like, yeah, that. Where'd you come up with that? I was like, I don't know. It just sounded good. And you were like, we're using that. And I was like, wait, really? And you were like, yes, that we're using. And yeah, for a while, we thought that was going to be the name of the film. Yeah, because uh, yeah. that's, uh, you have the prop behind you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had, we I made the, another little Sharpie logo. We had these shirts made up for it. But when I was writing the, the character that Riddick plays in the script, we called him George. This was before uh, he vouched for the Hindu influence. And I, wrote him as like when he gets crazier he starts becoming more sporadic and shaky you know the typical things and with the line maybe it's the milk it was just supposed to be a throwaway like <laughs> maybe it's the milk or something and it runs so, so maybe, maybe i'll have you go just like oh, maybe it's the milk and then run it and then she could say something really just funny, like, like rohan is bubbling with frightful laughter it's happening it's happening rohan turns towards the fridge maybe it's the milk but when we shot riddick he he did it in such like a dramatic like intense like maybe it's the milk Pull. Yeah, we, we did, did the push the pull. We did the jaws shot. Yeah. We did the jaws shot. I was amazed we pulled that off. Yeah, that was, with a skateboard. Was, yeah. All right, I'm going to try it. All right, okay. Well, you say action and we'll just try it a bunch of times, right? Okay, and we're rolling and sound and action. Maybe it's the milk. Crazy, you're like, yeah. dial that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to overact. For, hey, I'll, I'll do it. You, no, you want to overact. Maybe it's the milk. Maybe it's the milk. This is that money shot. This okay, is okay, okay, shot. okay. Maybe it's the milk. Maybe yeah, it's yeah. the milk. Maybe it's the milk. Maybe it's the milk. 
Maybe it's the milk. We were really just like, what do we have? A skateboard? Good. Nate, get on the skateboard. I'm going to push you. In editing, we just kept repeating it over and over because the way you said it was just so, it got in your head. It clicked. It had the. It had to be called that. And now to this day, to. I still randomly, like, I'll just be sitting down having a conversation. I'll just be like, hey, maybe it's the milk. I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be saying that for the rest of my life. I like the pacing. I like, and, and that's a credit to you, man. Just like the pacing of it, the way, the placing of, um you know, all the crystals on the floor and like the quick cuts, the tossing of the pizza, just get that the fuck out of here. Yeah. Hilarious. Like, I don't know, man. It's just something about it. Every time I watch it, I just like, I smile more and more and I'm like, that is good. Like, I, I like, I, I'm, I'm proud to show this as, as a film that we all worked on. I agree. Like for a 48 hour film, I feel like we really knocked it out of the park. Like everything I feel like would be like, oh, this visual effect isn't that great. Or like, oh, I could have edited this better. It's just like, we didn't have time. You know, it's no. not, it's not for a lack of, of vision or talent is just like we were trying to get it done i'm surprised it came out as well as it did Same. everybody who was there gave it their all everybody who was there cared and that yeah. that that was the key liz was even memorizing her lines too and everything like that dude we didn't yeah. even ask her i was playing on just shouting like what we did with riddick is like yeah. i would shout his line to him and he would just repeat it and i would cut yeah. me out now you're looking down you look up you did this you did this. I go downstairs and I'm like, where's Liz? Where's Liz? And she's just like walking around, like just like with her phone and just like memorizing the lines. We had a great crew. I mean, even Paul running around in the morning, grabbing all the props. There was not one thing that happened that we could have done without like every single right. thing somebody did was vital especially like Yvonne coming through. That was another yeah. thing. We day one, yeah. we, we had a meeting with like uh like 15 20 people ready to go so we wrote the script around that and then the day comes and you know th things happen like people are just whittle, like oh whittle, whittle. turns out i couldn't get off work turns out yeah. i'm busy turns out uh i can only stay till this and that and then we got to a point where there was literally nobody to play the go the boots the ghost <laughs> right. so i like i i call yvonne and i'm just like hey can you grab that gray wig, which we have already, the cape, which we already have. It was all just stuff I already owned. Can you just grab all of this, come over here and just be our ghost? And she's like, sure. I'm just like, don't worry. More people are coming too. I'm just waiting for everybody to show up and then we can all split off in the appropriate things. Do you know what time yeah. Nikki and Daria are coming? Um, they said about an hour. All right. Um, so they'll they'll be late additions to the ghoul squad which is fine we just need somebody right now and then you could do their makeup and then it ended up just being her she, she was the one yeah she, she was, was it. the ghost i actually honestly preferred it other than having because there were all already so many elements so many spinning plates in the air to make this thing happen i think if we had multiple ghost shots of multiple different actors dealing with different personalities different types you know Yvonne coming in last minute, coming in clutch. She just like saved the day because it was just perfect. And she was like ready and willing. Yeah, they curl in the arm. You're curl like, yeah, you have power in your hands. Like yeah. picture this? two Spread them out a little bit. Spread them out a little bit. This? Two good yeah. watermelons. Bend at the elbows. Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. <laughs> I was saying glowing orbs. You're like watermelons. Okay, that's fine. Either way. There's some great behind the scenes shots <laughs> of her just chilling on her phone, like chilling on the couch with the feet up and you know just totally decked out in yeah. ghost makeup it was a great experience i'd love to do this again next year you can go check it out on lkh's channel there'll be a link down below uh and just let me know what you think about it down in the comments thank you for coming on leif it's been great talking with you hey thanks for having me man absolutely and be on the lookout for more lkh productions in the future i'm sure he's gonna be making some great stuff uh absolutely. but until next time i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend and as always keep it fizzy